Shalom. All praises go to the Most High Yahweh, Basham Yahshab, Basham Adamah, with our double honors unto the Elder Apostles, a great millstone for the teachings of the scriptures, among other things. Shalom to the sincere Akim across the world. Now, this doofus over here, he said that he is in the New Testament because he said, I don't know if you know, but I am in the New Covenant. I, I, I didn't even see this guy 100% because he went about it with another brother. You know, because, uh, yeah. Anyway, I just read this and I just put this a couple of seconds ago, of course. So I typed in New Covenant. Then that means you're perfect now, right? Why do you then still need to teach us then? Because according to you, we're wrong, right? Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant did break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall no more teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. So what is this guy doing? Because he's trying to teach us something, right? He came up here talking about Abraham and stuff like that. I didn't even read it. Because, uh, yeah, he doesn't know what the hell. What the hell are you talking about, man? Uh, the Bible don't say it. No, Abraham stones. It is about bloodline and it is about color. It goes back to it. It goes back to the bloodline and it goes back to the skin color. We amongst each other shouldn't be fighting because of the bloodline because you don't know if that guy's an Israelite or not. And the skin color, you don't know if he's an Israelite. He, he might look like a, you know, a heathen nation. But his ancestry goes back to the Israelite man that laid down with that heathen nation female. It's your faith in Caesar Borshia that saves you. Caesar Borshia can't save you. Never heard of that guy. He's a devil. I heard of him, but in disrespect, I say I never heard of you. Just like how you had Nabal say to, about King David. Who is King David? Who is that guy? Like that. But then, uh, yeah. That's in the book of Samuel. Second Samuel, if I'm correct. Or genealogies, <laughs> the real Christians are Israelites, which is a derogatory word toward them because they follow Yahweh Shai. Anyway, so yeah, um, so Isaiah chapter 66, verse 4 I also will choose their delusion. And bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes. And chose that in which I delighted not. The Most High will choose your delusions. Because it says also in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8. It says that, well actually 3 verse 9. It says that once that time comes, we will have a pure language. And yet this guy is speaking and talking English. Uh, sorry, speaking and writing English. Right, so it says here, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. And who's the prey? These Edomites. We're first and foremost. But uh, Psalms 83, if I'm correct. Yeah. These people are our prey. But the biggest prey is Esau. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8 Judah thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies thy father's children shall bow down before thee that's the part that's, that's the inheritance of Judah starting with the here the 
one that has the scepter of Judah, which is Yahweh Shai. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. They're not on their prey no more. They basically left off off of them. He scooped down. He couched as a lion. So how does a lion couch? Just like that statue, the Sphinx. Mm. Scoop down lion. This is how they stoop. This. Not this. This, yeah. <laughs> and a couch lion. It's also the same. Hey, this one is good. This is a good picture. <laughs> this is basically Judah now. You know? And uh, let me see. Couch lion. This. It's like you're sitting in. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Judah right now, basically. Taking a nap. Don't know what the hell is going on around him. He's just chilling. Doesn't really, you know. He's not like this. He's supposed to be like this. You know what I'm saying? Feared. And fearful. And they will fear us soon. Every nation on this planet. Every nation in existence. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 10. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the, by the name of Yahweh. And what will they do? And they shall be afraid of thee. Everyone is going to fear us. They're going to be scared. Which is rightfully so. Which is our inheritance. They're supposed to they'd be in fear of us. And they will be. The manes of a Burberry lion. It protects his under belly for fights. This is the African lion. He doesn't have that hair here. You know, but the Burberry does because he is a fighter. And therefore, he can't really, you know, he can't get an injury in his belly. Just like how Yahweh Shai has his, how do you call that thing? Like a warrior belt around your loins, around your middle. Because you can lose an arm, you can lose a leg. You can get stabbed in the chest. But if you get stabbed in the, in the stomach, like in the belly area, you could be in danger. So therefore, a warrior, his stomach is always protected because, you know, your intestines might just drop out your body. But other wounds you can sustain, except the, even the wound to the head you can sustain. But hey, you want to take that chance? Shouldn't take, shouldn't try and take the chance. But anyway, going on is a good picture. <clears throat> Where's this African lion? As you can see. The African lion is like this. His belly is exposed, but a Burberry lion is not. He has that hair here. The Asiatic lion is the smallest lion from Asia. He's very small. Just like Asian people. In general, they're small. But anyway, that's enough of that. So, going back to the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Wait, where was he again? 40. Let's say 40 and really. Yeah. Until the day that I rise up to the prey. Yahweh is going to do it. The Heavenly Father is going to do it. For my determination. So his determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms. To do what? To pour upon them mine indignation. Even all my fierce anger. 
for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. They're going to get destroyed. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. So this is after World War III and, Arm and also Armageddon, which first come Armageddon, and then in the midst of Armageddon, World War III. Armageddon means mountain of troops, and those troops are the militaries of these other heathen nations. And the Lord is going to destroy them upon all their armies. Where is he at, Isaiah? I thought it was so. Isaiah 34 and 1. Come ye near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Indignation, indignation means righteous anger. An anger provoked or annoyance. Anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment. Basically, righteous anger. For example, if somebody stabs your mother, you are rightfully angry to go out and try to, you know, do something to that person. You're rightfully angry. It's a righteous anger. So for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to the slaughter. Man. We can read through the rest of the rest for itself if we have the time. For then will I turn to the people of pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So, this is a scripture that you should pull on people that say we are in a new covenant. Let me read it again. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by their hand and to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant did break. So we broke the first covenant. So now we're going to go up in a new covenant, the, the second covenant. Although I was an husband unto them, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Right. Because once we have those laws up in our inward part, then this will come to pass. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Lord is eternal life through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. But that's the part. If we are still dying, that that means that sin is still here. But the Heavenly Father said, 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 and 51, 51, yeah, 51, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, when the nuclear fire comes for the World War III. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So the dead is going to be raised up, and they're going to be made incorruptible. Uh, that's the spiritual dead, the ones that are being awoken right now. They're being raised up toward being incorruptible. But we are not yet. The Lord is going to make us. And the actual ones that are dead. You know, you have the ones that are asleep. Which Yahweh Shai said, when you basically are dead, you're asleep. Like the girl. And you have the ones that are walking around here, being alive. But they're dead from the neck up. They're spiritually dead. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Until 14. If you read that, then you will, you will see what I'm talking about. The Valley of the Dragons. So it says here, for this corruptible, which is our body, which is what we have right now, must put on incorruption. So we will not be able to be uh, corrupted anymore. And this mortal shall put on immortality. So we are now mortals and then we will be immortal because the this, if you sin, you will die. And we are still sinning until this day. And thus we still die. And therefore, we do not have immortality, which is the new covenant. That is the one that will give us that new 
uh, that immortality and also incorruption so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory yes because we don't have no victory over death yet Yahweh Shai did it and then he will come back and give us the power to have victory over death also because the Most High he's gonna put his laws in our inward parts and write it in our hearts which is our minds he's gonna put it within us right verse 34 um, Jeremiah 31 and 34 and they shall and so once we have this new covenant right let me read it again but this shall be the new but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and and be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach this is the funny part and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor his Israelite neighbor by the way and every man his brother saying know the Lord why for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith Yahweh for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more right because he's gonna take it away and the sins that we did before time when we break the first covenant those the, those are the ones that he will forgive so guess what we cannot be in the new covenant because it says clearly right here that once the new covenant come then we don't have to teach each other no more and also this will come when we have the new covenant Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 the word of the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem right which is all 12 tribes and it shall come to pass <laughs> excuse me and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains which is the nation of Israel shall be established above all the other heathen nations you know because the mountains represents governments just like how you have a summit meeting it says a summit meeting it's an international meeting of heads of state or government and then you have a summit which is what a summit is a point of a surface that is higher in what? elevation than all points immediately adjacent to it okay right so this is basically the top of the mountain here the top of the mountain that's the peak as you can see this is the peak here it goes up into the clouds right so it says here and sh and and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow onto it see it's talking about nations we're gonna be the top of the mountain right and many people shall go and say come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths people are not doing that right now because people are still being taught the ways of Esau and what one, one, one of the ways of Esau is uh, flying reindeer that's one of his ways a lot of people do celebrate this Christmas nonsense a lot of people do they celebrate this one bunnies that lay eggs they celebrate these things bunnies don't lay eggs man they just made that up but these are one of the ways of Esau in the heathen nation people have other heathen nation customs and stuff like that or you know uh, Brussels Simmons He's a Buddhist. Here, this guy uh, believes he became a vegan. He describes himself as a Christian yogi. What? With the love and respect for all religions, whatever, dude. The Heavenly Father said, Thou shalt have no other gods but, but me. So I'm a jealous God. 
So yeah, we and we don't we don't love no other gods, whatever hell. He's also a Buddhist here, Russell Simmons Dhamma Wiki. Yeah, this guy. He's also a Buddhist. Why? Because he has an Asian wife or whatever the hell. She, she, she's Japanese. Yeah, something, something like that. She's just a, you know, um, Asiatic type person, which is, I think, from the, the Thai people or something like that, you know, because they're brown. You know, you have, uh, where, where, where is she from? Oh, Japanese. Oh, Japanese Korean, yeah. The Korean made her brown, made her a little bit dark. The Korean part. Yeah, Korean. Hmm. Whatever, man. Let's see. I had enough. Right, so, uh, yeah. And Jap some Japanese people, girls are actually in a actually have a few Japanese girls that are actually brown, and they tend to. Uh, I have seen them, not in flesh, but then uh, I've seen documentaries and stuff like that. But you won't see them on the internet, just like how you. Just like how they they put you know so-called black females with afros as the majority of afro wearers. Meanwhile, we all know that black female only they only put the afro for pictures. Have you ever seen her like this? No, you have not. You see her with straight hair, because this is only for a picture, just a photo shoot. Stand still, stand for the camera, and then that's it. And then you go back to your regular ass life, which is this, this is hypocritical shit. But I saw this guy, what's his name? I saw Justin Bieber with this thing. And then they were saying that, um, yeah, here, they accused him of cultural appropriation for wearing locks. If you put on the afro, I'll be pissed off because I don't want them to have my hair. But you can do Rasta, man. It's not my shit. Um, where's, the, where's the other one? Here. Right here, this. This is the, this is the, uh, this is basically the face. The commercial face, the commercial hair type of the so-called black female. Right, this is the who you who you trying to be hypocritical shit. But anyway, it says here, he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, which is agriculture tools and their spears into pruning hooks also nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore so this implies that once the Israelites are in the new covenant everybody is gonna come to our God and trying to teach learn our ways and walk in our paths and there will not be any war anymore this also is a scripture that, that you can pull to show that the people that live in Israel right now are not the true Hebrew Israelites because World War III is on the horizon. And it shows you that once the real Israelites are back in that land, the mountain of the Lord is back in that land, then there shall be world peace. So Zechariah 3 and 8. Thus saith Yahweh, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. It is not called that right now. And it also shall be called and the mountain of the Lord of hosts. 
the only mountain that is what will we be called <coughs> that is what will that is what we will be called sorry <coughs> sorry <coughs> So, there you have it. We will be called the holy mountain of the Lord. And they will walk in our ways. And what also will we get? Isaiah 40 and 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, Yahweh, the everlasting power, Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. Night is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He is too smart. He's too, he's beyond words of intelligence. You can't even measure it. <clears throat> so the word intelligence is, is actually uh, a, a disrespect if you use that toward him. Because it's so nothing. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall fail and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall eventually. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They're going to be able to fly, meaning being uncorruptible. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. This goes into immortality with new bodies. That is what we are going to get. Because it's just that, um, where is it now? Oh yeah, that was, uh, where is it now? Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom. It was Corinthians. Good boy. First Corinthians 15 and 50. Oh yeah, I started at 51. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So, we will be incorruptible, and we will be um, made into, because it says here, wait, let me hear 39 1 Corinthians 15 and 39 All flesh is not the same flesh But there is one kind of flesh of men Another flesh of beasts Another of fishes And another of birds This is also to show you that we cannot have been evolved From Amphibian fish Whatever it was What's the, what's the, what's the clown shit that these devils Yeah, what these devils say? Yeah, these devils say that we were fish, then we became amphibians or something, and then that was this, and then mammals, and then people or something like that. He said that this is the life cycle, the brain evolution. We were fishes, then amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, and then... Bullshit, yo. Oh, yeah, I saw another one. This is, this is, this is Caucasian culture. This is their culture. This is their teachings. This is their ways. We will not have that in the kingdom because the Lord said that. Where is it? Right here? Oh, yeah. The Lord said that we will follow after the ways of the house of Jacob. Follow after the God of Jacob. Not not this crap. This crapolini. You you notice that you only see Caucasian people. You don't see us. This is not our teachings, not our culture. So if you apply this to you, because I've seen a bunch of stupid Negroes, especially in America, they believe in evolution too. I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, what, what, what did you just say? Yo, the longer y'all stay among these Edomites, the more y'all gonna get messed up. That is not what your ancestors was teaching you. You grew up around these devils, and therefore you think like them. All right? So... We're going to get that power, which is what you should want. You should want this, you know, and these are our enemies. 
upon whom will we uh, we will test our powers. <laughs> it's going to be fun. They shall become as dung on the earth. So yeah, there you have it, man. When somebody comes up to you talking about that new co covenant thing, just grab the book of Jeremiah chapter 30. Just grab the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 and go up in there. You just cut them with this. We are not in the new covenant. We are in the first covenant still. But once that new covenant comes, then we will get this. This also. Before the new covenant actually. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Let me say it good. Before the new covenant comes, the, the, the elect they will get spiritual powers as according to the book of Acts chapter 6 sorry Acts chapter 1 verse 6 and also Acts chapter 2 you know and, um, Acts chapter 1 verse uh, 8 you can, you can read from 6 on but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in, in all Judea, Judea, and in Samaria, and under the uttermost part of the earth. Here. I'm like brushing my eggs a little bit. Yeah. I can go on and on and on. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. And uh, don't believe people that tell lies. Talking about they're in the new covenant. <laughs> yeah, Shalom.